The history of America has never seen anything like this. Ever. Ever. And he's saying what? What did he just say? Did you listen to what he just said? Listen carefully. The pursuit of peace is most needed in this world so full of strife. So you could look at this two ways. The man actually believes what he's saying, and he's naive and doesn't really understand the world in which he lives. Remember, he had no international standing before becoming president. He was naked as a senator. He had no foreign policy experience whatsoever. And John McCain could have beaten him on that. By the way, bringing up that old war horse. But McCain shot himself in the foot once again. The man still has no foreign policy experience. If you look at the woman who negotiated this deal, if you've seen her, the tall, skinny, blonde woman who's popped up all of a sudden, here is a hardcore Carterite, a hardcore left-wing academic who has capitulated to the world's number one terrorist nation, Iran. And they're selling it as a path to peace. Nobody wants peace more than Michael Savage. But this is a path to war. This is a huge story. This is a very big deal. Boxer, of course, the woman who loves Planned Parenthood selling baby body parts, is very happy to be a front for the Iranian mullahs. But as I said, the three prominent Jewish Democrats who have some integrity, unlike Boxer, Nita Lowy, who's very liberal, Florida Rep Ted Deutsch, very liberal, Rep Israel, very liberal, all backed out of the deal. But that didn't deter Barbara Boxer. She's in on this all the way down the road. By the way, as a side note, as I said the other day, Obama is such a phenomenal rhetorician that he will be studied for decades to come. Corporations can learn from him on how to lie to stockholders. People will study how to tell a lie and make it look like the truth. This will be studied for maybe 100 years. The most skilled liar in the history of American politics performed today. And I must say he did a great performance. He almost had me believing him until I analyzed the facts, which I broke down for you. This is a big deal. And uh, the Republicans have announced they have 218 votes lined up to oppose Obama's path to war. And that's in the House, of course. But if the Senate also opposes the agreement, as I hope they will, both chambers would need to muster a two-thirds majority to override an expected presidential veto by President Obama. And that's where the few Democratic votes will be critical for both sides of the debate. It's not looking good for Iran. It's not looking good for Obama, their chief salesman. No, sorry, Bob. And where will the money go with the sanctions relief? Where will that money be used by Iran? For baby food? For baby uh, diapers? Let's listen to clips three and four back to back on the Savage Nation. It is true that Iran lives up to its commitments. It will gain access to roughly $56 billion of its own money. Revenue frozen overseas by other countries. But the notion that this will be a game changer, with all this money funneled into Iran's pernicious activities, misses the reality of Iran's current situation. Partly because of our sanctions, the Iranian government has over half a trillion dollars in urgent requirements, from funding pensions and salaries to paying for crumbling infrastructure. Sounds like Iran's America. leaders have raised the expectations of their people that sanctions like relief have. will improve their lives. We need sanctions relief. And that's from you. why our best analysts expect the bulk of this revenue to go into spending that improves the economy and benefits <laughs> the lives of the Iranian people. Now, Hold this on. is not to say the sanctions stop. relief. And that's why our best analysts expect the bulk of this revenue to go into spending that improves the economy and benefits the lives of the Iranian people. Does anyone listening to the show believe that? Now he goes on and he admits that sanctions relief will be used by the military in clip four. Listen to this big whopper now. Now, this is not to say the sanctions relief will provide no benefit to Iran's military. Let's stipulate oh. that oh. some of that money will flow to activities that we object to. Oh. We have no illusions about the Iranian government or the significance oh. of oh, the Revolutionary that. Guard and the Quds Force. That. Iran supports that. terrorist organizations like Hezbollah. It I supports proxy that. groups that threaten our interests and the interests of our allies, no, including so proxy groups for? who killed our troops in Iraq. So what are you helping them They for? try to destabilize our Gulf partners. Gulf but partners? Iran has been engaged in these activities for decades. They engaged in them before sanctions and while sanctions we're in place. And whatever benefit Iran may claim from sanctions relief pales in comparison to the danger it could pose with a nuclear weapon. It makes no sense. So he's saying they're a dangerous rogue nation, and he's saying we're going to take a chance by giving them the chance not to develop a nuclear weapon 
all the while helping develop their nuclear technology. And I know he has golf on his mind because it's near Martha's Vineyard time, and it is early August, and he shouldn't be working right now, but he had to try to squeeze one more in on the world. And he actually said they tried to destabilize our golf partners. And I don't know if he's referring to Ron Burkle, Bill Clinton, or who, but I really didn't know that Iran was involved in destabilizing golf partners. That could be an offhanded uh, reference to Donald Trump, by the way. I, I'll have to look into that. It's hard not to be comedic in the political arena at a time like this. So forgive me for these minor side notes.